in this part of the experiment, we're going to do a simple distillation, which is very similar to the fractional distillation we did just a moment ago. But in this case, we don't have that long column in the middle here. So we have our flask where the boiling is going to occur. And then as soon as it get here, gets here, it can start to condense and go down and be collected. This is, um, has some advantages and some disadvantages. And we'll try to see through the data analysis what some of those are. But the setup is fairly similar uh, in that I have my condensing column. I have my water that's going to be coming in the bottom. Let's get that going. Okay, so fill that up. It's going out to the top. I made sure that the hoses aren't touching the heating mantle here. I have my graduated cylinders over there that have been pre-weighed and they're ready to go. So I'm going to drop this down. Okay, and we're going to add our sample to it. And once again, I already took the mass of this. Uh, I'm not going through that whole thing this time, just to save some time in the experiment. But this was also a sample of the beet sugar that had been fermented with yeast in tap water and the pasture salt solution for 10 days. Right, let's get that out of the way here. Okay. Bring this up and get this all lined up. Make sure we have a good seal here. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn this on again. I'm going to be a little more conservative this time because it tends to go a little bit quicker. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start it heating. Again, I have my thermometer. Um, I can take my initial temperature here. The room's a little cool at 20 degrees Celsius, but I position that to be at the point where it goes through uh, the condensation. All right. So we'll come back to this in a few minutes once we have the reflux that started. So I've been heating for a while now, and you can see that we've got boiling going on in here, and that the temperature is starting to rise. We're up about 45 degrees, uh, so the vapor barrier or the vapor edge is getting up towards the thermometer. So very soon we're going to uh, start with our collection here. So I want to bring back the video so you can see that as it begins. You may be seeing some condensing here. So even though we don't have the column in here, we do usually get a couple of condensation um, uh, evap re-evaporation cycles that happen. Oh, just saw something drip off my thermometer. So we should be very close. I'm here. Okay, just got to be a little bit patient. Make sure we're centered in here. It's a little lower than the point at which it goes across. So it's going to hit that first. Okay. You can see it now starting to condense in this space up here. And my temperature is definitely still rising. Oh, I got a drip coming through right there. Come on, come on, come on, drop out, drop out. Oh, so close. All right, first drip. I'm going to take my temperature there. Now, once again, we're going to still continue to collect um, temperature and volume uh, data about every two milliliters approximately and then we're going to collect the density of several fractions now this is coming through a little bit quick again this happens so I'm going to slow this down a little bit okay Make sure that's all nice and tight okay. one milliliter I'm going to get my second, make sure it's my second one here. You can do this about every mil to mil and a half. So let's go ahead and go up to the, or I'm sorry, mil and a half to two milliliters. Looks like I need to tighten that a little bit. Okay. Slow it down. I still see it condensing up in here. Still getting some drips over there. We don't want to go too fast or we can't get good data. Okay, so we're going to swap this out now. It's coming pretty fast. Be careful with that. Uh, we are at meters and our temperature is eight. Okay, going on to the next fraction now.
All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let it start slowing down. My temperature is going up quite a bit. So at the end, once again, we'll take the mass of every one of these graduated cylinders and record their volume. And that data will be provided for you for analysis. At the end, we just need to clean everything up and make sure it's all nice and dry and clean and ready for the next student.